Hey guys, today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash Fred. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, MP3 player. That's audibletrial.com slash Fred. But for now, enjoy the show. Welcome, 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 guys. Come on in, relax, and have a cup of coffee. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you're doing dishes. Maybe you're on a treadmill. Maybe you're driving to work. Hey, I'm so glad to have you here. I have three questions for you. Do you aspire to a creative life? Are you tired of working nine to five? Are you asking yourself, what is the point of it all? Or maybe a fourth question. Do you want to take your creativity to the next level? Yes, welcome to the Creative Magic Unchained uh, Podcast. This podcast is about unleashing your creativity. We talk to experts. We step into the unknown. It is an inspirational podcast. It is a magical podcast. It is an intuitive podcast as we chat with enigmatic, charismatic artists from around, around the globe, oh yeah, and um, we, we, I mean, we talk to musicians, singers, radio hosts, you know, business people, photographers, hey, this show is cool, I really love doing this, this thing, I speak to a bunch of people all the time, and it's really, really cool, uh, hey, the tower of power, too sweet to be sour, funky like a monkey, sky is the limit, and space is the place, I am Frederick By, and I am your host. Oh yeah, I'm a businessman, I'm an artist, I'm a writer, I'm a friend, I'm a blogger, I'm a partner, I'm a book reader, I'm a, uh, I don't know, I'm just whatever, <laughs> uh, nothing comes to mind right now, so <laughs> this podcast is about, uh, is free, every time you download it on iTunes uh, or Stitcher, please go over there and subscribe. Uh, it is listener supported. So if you, th- you know, if, if some, one of your friends, somebody, you know, if you think that this thing, you know, this podcast can be useful to somebody, Hey, share it with your friends. It's, it's really, it really, really helps a brother out. And also put, po- put comments on iTunes uh, or Stitcher. It really, really helps, you know, a brother out. Um, and uh, and that's it. And for more podcasts, free gifts, Q&A articles, subscribe at frederickby.com. That's Frederick, my name, by like bye bye dot com. Uh, on Twitter, you can find me at by Fred. On Facebook, you can simply type in my name, Frederick By. And uh, also check out my YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, for previous episodes. Okay, hey, today we talk, oh, I love this conversation, I love, 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 love today's conversation, because we talk with Michael Grandinetti, yeah, I mean, with performances on national and international television, in stadiums, arenas, casinos, and theaters around the country with Oscar-winning composers and symphony orchestras, for NFL halftime shows and major sporting events while surrounded by 70,000 people. You know, I mean, for Fortune 500 companies and even at the White House, Michael has made a name for himself around the world as an extremely talented and innovative illusionist and entertainer. Hey, um, I really, really had a good time talking with Michael because... He's just an inspiring, uplifting, enthusiastic guy. And, you know, magic is just something that, I mean, every one of us resonate with it. You cannot tell me that magic on some level does not impress you. And you know what? Michael, in this interview, I really, really like talking to him because I really like to talk to people who are really passionate about what they do. You know, and this was this is why I do this show. And, I mean, this guy is just, is just passionate. I mean, he's running 500 miles an hour. He has an hour. He has so many shows coming up this year, you know, and, and I mean, you can tell in his voice that he really, really like loves what he does. And that I think is contagious. I think it, it spreads all around, you know, it spreads to you, it spreads to me. It's, it's, it's contagious. And man. I, you know, after, after I did that, that interview, I was, again, I was uplifted. It was like, oh, yes, 
that's pretty cool. I love doing this thing. I love doing the podcast. Um, he has a new show that's going to be coming out in June 3rd. We're going to talk about that um, on on the CW. Oh, yeah, on the CW. And um, this summer, actually, it's coming out. Check this out. And so, without further ado, we're going to get to the conversation right after this. Quick thanks to RadioGuestList.com where you can find people to interview for free. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you for your support. And for advertisement offers, you can reach me at info at FrédéricBay.com. That's info at FrédéricBay.com. And use the subject advertising. Hello, hello. So we are here with Michael Grandinetti. Is that how we pronounce your name, Michael? Right, that was perfect. That's exactly how it is. <laughs> All right, cool. He's a magician, an illusionist, an entertainer. He is filming season three of Masters of Illusion, scheduled for a summer premiere. How are you today? I'm great. I'm great. How are you? Thanks for having me on. I am fabulous. I am fabulous. Hey, the subject of magic, the subject of magic uh fascinates everybody i don't i don't i don't think there is a person on the planet who doesn't who isn't in awe of magic we love to see magic we love to just to just you know it's so it's just a, it's just a mysterious kind of world you know what i mean it's kind of it's so like It's, I don't know. It's, we love stuff like that, basically. <laughs> that's, well, that's all I want to no, say. No, <laughs> I agree. I agree 100%. You know, magic takes us back. I think it takes us back to a time in our life, kind of like when we were kids, where, where we felt anything was possible. And we felt, you know, that, you know, if you think about when you were a kid, you really, you really didn't think anything, you know, you thought anything could really happen. So ma yeah. magic kind of enlivens that very positive, very imaginative kind of spark in people. And, and, You know, in today's world, it, you know, there's so much going on and people are so busy. I think it's, I think it's really kind of uplifting to feel that. All right. So right, right before we dive into the subject in your current series and what you're doing now, let's give, give us an idea here of your background. Well, I, you know, I've been doing magic for a long time. I'm, I'm, I always tell people I'm a really lucky person that I found what I love to do early in life. Mm -hmm. I got a magic set for Christmas when I was five. And I think a lot of kids get, you know, get magic sets, uh, But there was just something about it that, that just attracted me. I was I was drawn to it. And it was like everything else that, you know, that was under the Christmas tree that year just kind of got pushed to the back. And I was enamored with his magic set. And from that point on, I knew I wanted to be a magician. And everything I did growing up was kind of along the path of following that goal. So it really shaped my life. And, you know, now fast forward, uh, you know, a few decades later, and I'm a lucky guy. I, you know, I get to live out my childhood dream. We travel on the road probably 75 to 85 percent of the year uh, doing large illusion shows in stadiums and arenas and for television shows and with symphony orchestras and for all, for all different types of events. And I absolutely I absolutely love it. I, and I, I was just saying to you, but right before we, we went on the air, I still feel like a five year old kid. I still get that excited about what I do. So that's kind of me in a nutshell. What what kind of what kind of kid were you? Like were you like a geek, you know, were you a, a dork <laughs> or were you like a troublemaker or were you, were you like stealing people's wallets like, you know, wow. you know it? <laughs> uh, no and I and, and hopefully no to all those, but um you know, I was I was a shy kid. I was I was reserved. I was, you know, magic. I think one of the things that drew me to magic was um you know, it gave me something to communicate with it gave me a way to communicate with people it gave me a way to interact with people um you know whereas i didn't have to just focus on conversation i could show people magic and the magic would kind of carry me through the interaction with people uh and that really helped me i think that really gave me the confidence to kind of come out of my shell and and you know kind of follow through like that but no i was i was i was you know i wasn't uh you know, in people's faces saying, Hey, let me show you a trick. Let me, you know, I wasn't kind of, it was, I was quiet. I was reserved, but I was, I was very, very, uh, passionate about, about magic. I, I would, you know, I lived and breathed it as, as I do to this day. Who were your, who were your idols growing up? Like mentor? Well, yeah, yeah just people you admired in magic. Who, who, uh, are you? Well, you know, in magic, 
I, you know, I can't really tell you, Fred, that there's any one person, but I will say this. I would, so when I was about 10 years old, I started to do my first little shows around the neighborhood. And so what, what happened was, I mean, I, I was, like I said, I was very studious about magic the entire time. But at that point, I started to really just really get hungry and wanted to learn everything. So when the TV listings would come in the newspaper every Saturday, I would snatch the TV listings out of the paper. I would go through them line by line by line and look at every talk show, every television show to see if any magicians were going to be on TV that week. And I would set the VCR. If you remember VCRs? I would yeah. set the VCRs <laughs> and, uh, and tape them and study them and watch them. And, and so really, I mean, to answer your question, my kind of idols and mentors growing up were, were – any magician that I could possibly see. I, it was really helpful. It was it was helpful. To, and you got to remember, this was a time there was no YouTube, there was no internet. Not that I'm that old, but still, it was before all that. <laughs> um, so, but it was great to see. It was great to see as much magic as possible to learn what I liked and, and kind of what I would do differently. And so I studied. I studied everybody. See, many of us we grow up in families where. They want you to have the regular job, nine to five. Look, you need to have a rational job. You need to have a, a steady job, a steady paycheck, a steady this, a steady that. And then you say, Hey, I want to be a magician, mom. I want to be a magician, dad. What was the mindset of the adults around you as you grew up? Were they supportive of you? Yeah, they were, they were incredibly supportive. Now, when I, so my, my family was incredibly, incredibly supportive. And the community around me was incredibly supportive. They would hire me, the, the community, you know, would hire me at 10, 11, and 12 to, to go around and do, you know, their, their family parties and then starting to do like company events. So I was a 12 year old kid walking with his box of magic doing like adult functions, adult holiday parties and, you know, things that were company or they, they weren't like kids parties, although I did, I did a lot of those too. But they really treated me like I was, they didn't treat me like a kid doing magic. They treated me like I was just a, a professional magician. <clears throat> and that gave me a lot of confidence. But my family, tremendously, tremendously supportive uh, the entire time. Uh, you know, my dad would would take me to the magic store every couple of weeks with the magic store in downtown Pittsburgh, where I'm from. Uh, and he would wait hours, hours while I went through the store, like item by item by item. And, you know, even though I had been there two weeks previous, every time I would go, I would do the same thing. I would just kind of like scour that store and see if there was anything new. He was very patient. Uh, my mom, very supportive, my brother, my sister, my test audiences, you know, and, uh, you know, they were always supportive. Now, when it came time, the only thing they really insisted was that I go to college. You know, they said, you know, you definitely have to, you know, you want to be a magician, but you have to do that. And I, and I didn't, I didn't disagree. Uh, that was, that was an invaluable college was very valuable, uh, experience for me. Um, cause I studied business, which was, which was very helpful, but yeah, they were, you know, they, they saw how much I loved it. And I think when you see, you know, I don't have any children, uh, you know, at this point in my life, but I think when you see your child so excited and so passionate about something, um, you just want to, you know, mm -hmm. support them. And, and they definitely did. See, see that that's interesting what you, what you said. Um, you mentioned that you went to college and you went into business and you said it was very, very helpful. How is it helpful, you know, well, you know, it's, it's show business and, and equal parts show and equal parts business mm -hmm. and the creative side of it. I mean, the creating of the magic, the creating of the show, putting the show together, creating the product that we're actually seeing on stage or on television. That's one side of it. But the other side of it is all of the business parts of it. And it is, how do I want to say this to you? Um, it's all encompassing, you know, to, to create a career in the entertainment field, uh, the business side is very important. You have to, you have to really work at marketing yourself and getting yourself out there, especially in today's world where there's so much visibility of so many things. I think there's so much competition in the marketplace. I think there's, there's just a lot going on, you know, for people vying for people's attention at all points in time. So you have to, you know, understand sales, you have to understand marketing, you have to understand communication, um, you know, the business, you have to run it like a business, really, if you want to do it as a business, if you want to do it as a, as a career, um, there, are, there are certainly a lot of people in the creative, you know, fields who they don't do it as a career. They, they have their profession and they just kind of do, you know, the creative endeavors 
as a hobby or on the side or as a part time job, which is which is, you know, wonderful as well. But if you want to do it as a full time full time thing, uh, the business part is is essential. It's essential. So the the business, you know, education that I got in, in college, it was kind of a launching pad for me. I mean, you learn from a textbook, you learn from teachers, uh, and, and I went to Duquesne University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and the teachers and everybody there. Again, it comes back to being supportive. They were great. I still keep in touch with them. Uh, they're wonderful people. But my point is, is that, and they did a great job, and they 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 just taught very valuable things that I still remember. But for me, it was essential to then, once college was over, when I was out in the quote unquote real world, you have to apply those things. And it's kind of a process of, you know, learning what works, learning what doesn't, learning as you go, trial and error that you have to go through uh, to really, you know, figure out how to make all that work. So that's a long answer to your question, but, but you know, at the end of the day, the business, the business part is, is uh, to me, it makes all the difference in the world. See, I asked that question because I think what you just said is so important. Um, so I speak to a lot of authors and I speak to musicians, uh, you know, and. So many people, so many artists, they just want to, let's say they just want to write or they just want to do a piece of music or they just want to do magic. And they think that the publisher, the whomever is going to do the job for them. Uh, is magic, is magic the same? Do you have like a publisher or like, do you have like, uh, somebody who produces you or you're like a indie magician? Well, I mean, I, I, I work with a lot of different people around the country yeah. in terms of producers, agents, managers, event planners, uh, you know, people who, and then on the theatrical, those of you like the, we'll call those people, the business organizers, as far as people who are organizing projects, but then you have the people internally who are doing sound and lighting and choreography and staging and scripting, your writing and all of that stuff. So there's a lot of people that you kind of, uh, work in collaboration with when you, when you do what I do. But, um, my mindset is never, I'm just going to focus on the magic. I'm going to let them do their things. Personally, for me, what, what works for me is I kind of have my hand in all of it because I'm very specific mm. in how I want things to be. I have a, you know, I have, I have a pretty clear picture of how uh, it, of what I want our shows to look like and how I want to progress with it and where I want to go. So I, you know, I, I just don't, you know, I'm very, very active in all those different elements of it. That said, I love it when people come up with ideas. No one person knows everything. I certainly don't. And so the collaboration part of it is, is really important. Um, and you come up with some great ideas that way, but yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely, it, it, you know, I, I don't work in a vacuum for sure, for sure. But I am involved in every, every part of every part of the business from the external stuff to the internal stuff. Wow. Important. Yeah. That's important to know. Have a hand in everything that you do. You know, you're the kind of father of your craft and your show kind of in a way, although you have a lot of help, you know, but I think that's an important thing for people to remember. Uh, so right. Once again, we're here with Michael Grandinetti. He's a magician, an illusionist and entertainer. He's filming season three of Masters of Illusion on the CW scheduled for a summer premiere. Check him out. Uh, all right. Let's shift gears. Talk about your current uh, craft, your current work. Well, it's, it's a busy time right now. We just, we actually just finished filming season three. We just wrapped two days ago uh, for Masters of Illusion for the CW. This is our third season back, and it's it's tremendously fun. I mean, it is just, it is so much fun. It, a lot, it, the, the tapings. I'll tell you this. So we tape in Hollywood in front of a live audience. There's about 300 to 400 people in the studio where we where we perform. And the audiences there are always fantastic. They come to see magic. And like you said at the beginning of the interview, people, I think, people just really enjoy magic. It just really connects with them. It fascinates them. It makes them feel like a kid. All those positive things we talked about. So the tapings were just so much fun. We, we put in several new illusions, people, things that people have never seen on television before. So I can't wait for it to air this summer. So we're doing that. And then we also have another show on pop TV called Don't Blink uh, that we filmed last year. This should be coming back this year as well. And that show is about uh, magic in real life situations all over kind of Los Angeles where people are going about their daily lives. And, and you know, we surprise them by performing magic for them uh, on Hollywood Boulevard, Universal Studios, Venice Beach, in all these different locations. So we had a lot of fun with that. 
Um, going back to Masters of Illusion for a second, we found out that it premieres on June 3rd at 8 p.m. on the CW. So I hope uh, I hope your listeners can uh, can tune in on June 3rd and 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 it's a great show for people of all ages to watch. You know, people, mm-hmm. entire families can kind of gather on the TV and watch the show, which which I'm tremendously proud of. Uh, beyond that, Fred, we're, we're traveling all the time. We are on the road, like I said, most of the year. I, I feel like I'm on airplanes, you know, uh, more than than in my own car. Uh, so we go to Pennsylvania. We're doing the halftime show for the Penn State basketball game in February. We're doing shows throughout Los Angeles in March. We are uh, we're pretty much on the move for the entire year. So if anybody sees a magician with a big long Italian last name coming to their city, it's probably you know me. So you know, please come and check us out. So, so you're like a rock star, actually. Are you like 200, 300 days a year in a row, like on the road, or? Yeah, I mean, like, when you count all the travel days and the show days and everything, it's it's the bulk of the year for sure, for sure. So you know, but I love that. I, you know, I love that. I get to see cities and go to places that you know I wouldn't have the chance to see otherwise. And it's wonderful to, to go there and to meet the people and to um, you know just have that experience. It's 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 wonderful i again I, i can't tell you i can't stress how much i i love my job that's why i encourage people to find their passion in life you know there's such a difference between just doing a job and collecting a paycheck than, than doing what you love and following your passion each and every day and i you know i can't stress enough that you know in some way shape or form whether it's as a profession or just as a hobby find that passion in life it, it is it is really rewarding Talk to us about one specific trick that you do in your sh- in your show, um, you know, one that you know will captivate people. I'll give you. Let me. I'll give you a couple. So there's one that we do that took seven years to bring to life. From the time I got the idea for the illusion to the time we put it on stage, it was, it was seven years. And it's a piece where I, I we have a seven foot tall, four foot wide, one inch thick plate of steel. It's, it's solid steel. And we have the audience come up and they examine it and they rub their hands over it and just to prove that there's no trap doors or anything in it. They hit it with their hands. And and then I literally melt my body right through the center of that piece of steel. And it's it's a piece that we were – it took seven years because we, I, I was very careful. I wanted it to be perfect. I wanted it to be just right. And I tested out so many different ways of doing it, different – sizes of walls, different thicknesses of steel, different ways for the wall to be oriented, different, you know, just I, it's just a lot of trial and error. Um, but what we ended up with, I'm really proud of, and it's been a piece that even other magicians have come in to our show and they've said, you know, I have no idea how you walk through that steel wall and I don't want to know. And so for another magician to be kind of amazed, uh, I love that because as magicians, we don't get a chance to be amazed. You know, you kind of think like a magician when you watch a magic show. So uh, I love being able to, um, you know, give other magicians that sense of amazement in addition to the audience. But so the steel wall is one of my is one of my favorites. Uh, there's a piece I do where I float 10 feet in the air uh, that we've done in stadiums. We've, we've taken it. We just did the we did the Arizona Cardinals halftime show a few months ago uh, and we had 70,000 people surrounding us outside at the University of Phoenix Stadium. And I levitated 10 feet in the air on the 50 yard line. It was for one of the ESPN Monday Night Football games. And it was just, it was, uh, you know, to be 10 feet above the 50 yard line of a football field with all those people around you, you're getting a view that nobody else typically gets of a, of a stadium like that. Um, that's one, that's one of my favorite illusions and one of my favorite memories of that illusion. So, but there are so many pieces, you know, I love each piece in our show for, for different reasons. Uh, but those are two that definitely two of my favorites. Wow. Wow. Um, for the male audience out there, uh, does magic really work to attract chicks? <laughs> magic is, I, you know, I get asked that question a lot. Um, magic, uh, let me, let, let me say it this way. Magic is a great <laughs> way to, uh, you know, interact with people. Uh, yes, Fred, it works. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's a great way. It's a great way, to connect. It. It's a great way to connect with people. It's a great way to, to it's a great icebreaker. It's a great way yeah. to fascinate people. It's a great conversation starter. Uh, when you walk away after doing magic, people remember you, uh, you know, hopefully. Um, because again, you know, they, you, it gives them a feeling they don't get every day when you're amazed like that. So yeah, you know, it, it's magic is, a, it's, it's a great thing to connect with people. It, you know, it really kind of, um, 
uh, you know, is a great social tool. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I love that. Um, all right. So let, let me ask you this. What was the creative process behind a magic trick? I mean, how do you create a trick? You know, uh, do you have a specific creative process? It depends. So I'll give you a couple of examples. So that steel wall I just mentioned, that came to be because I heard a piece of music. Music is very important in what I do. Really? I go through I go through music whenever I have the chance. I, I try because it, it just the music is is, is essential in the, in, in the show. Um, and this goes off in tangents, but it's like if you go to see a scary movie, if the scary music wasn't in the movie, you wouldn't feel the tension and the fear in the scene. The, the music adds just a lot to the feel of what you're watching. Magic is much the same. Or a dramatic movie or a romantic movie, it's all the same. So anyways, I heard this piece of music and I could just see – when I heard this instantly, I could just see somebody walking through a wall. I could see one hand coming through the wall and the other hand coming through the wall and the person pulling their body through the wall. And I just knew I had to do this illusion. Now at that point in time, I didn't know – how I wanted to do it. I didn't have the magic technology figured out. I just knew I just wanted to do this. So from there, I started to draw up on the computer different possible structures, uh, you know, ways to design the actual physical uh, pieces on stage. To, to what, what would it look like? And from there, once you decide kind of what it's going to look like, you know, you'll develop the magic technology that really allows you to create the illusion of walking through the wall. And then from there, once you have the the magic technology in place, you have kind of the visual structure of, of the illusion in place. Then you have to start talking to the builders, the engineers, the people who build the, the stage props that you need. And, you know, that's a process. There's a lot of trial and error. You know, you have to build mock-ups. You have to test things out. You have to, um, you know, that takes months and months. And then you, when you get the finished prop in hand, you have to rehearse it. And we rehearse for months, months and months until a piece is ready to, to go. Um, so, you know, and then you, then you put it in the show and then you test it out. You put it in front of an audience and you have to listen to that audience very carefully. You can't just go, okay, I think this is great. So I'm going to do it like this. If you put something in front of the audience, you could feel as a performer, if what parts of it work, what parts of it aren't really connecting and you're, you have to constantly listen and adjust accordingly. So we're constantly, you know, even the creative process never ends. We are, every time we put a piece of magic in front of an audience, we're, we're listening to the audience um, and we're watching the audience. You know, when, when the audience is lit, like for a television show, you could see them. And I'm always trying to get input as to what are they liking? What are they connecting with the most? Uh, what parts do I need to turn up the dial on in this routine? Uh, so the creative process, it's very, you know, it's very kind of long and detailed up front. And then it's continuing for the entire life of whatever piece you're doing, if that makes sense. Wow! Yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I wouldn't have thought that music influences, you know, the creative process for magic. Uh, that's that's interesting. You, you, you did it after hearing a piece of music. Wow, that's awesome. Um, all right, you talked about business earlier. <clears throat> Let me ask you this: uh, the di- the digital age affects music. You know, you know, it affects music. It affects books. It affects a lot of artistic endeavors. Does that affect music? And in, in what way? Uh, sorry, not music, magic. Well, yeah, you but know in, what? It, in what way? No, I, that's a great question. That's a great question. It absolutely does. It absolutely does. So, I, I'll, again, I have a couple of examples for you. So, first of all, 15 years ago, when I when I you know moved to Los Angeles, and you know I was, I was ready to to hit the ground running. The only way this was the the, the, the internet, there was no YouTube, there was none of that stuff. The only way that I could really kind of get the word out on what I was doing was, and this was even before DVDs, DVDs were just coming into, into play at that point in time. I would take like garbage bags filled with VHS tapes and press kits to the post office, you know, and mail them all out, put them all together by hand, mail them all out and, and, you know, follow up with people. And so from a business standpoint, this is the business side of how the digital age helps. You can communicate, you can connect with people um, much easier today, you know, to, to, to let people kind of see your work, to network with people, to collaborate with people on a creative level. Um, you know, a lot of the, the work that I do with builders and designers uh, around the country and around the world now, you know, it's it's all done by video conference. And, and you know, Fred, like, you, you know, how we are now, like, we're, you know, we're, you know, 
we're able to connect in different parts of, of the world, essentially, um, you know, because of the technology that we have. So from a business, from a business standpoint, it's, it's, it's tremendously helpful from a, from a purely, you know, kind of the art side of magic, it enables you to connect with the audiences much easier and much better. You know, things with like social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, all of those things that are out there now, uh, you know, you can really build a relationship with your audience so much easier and, and so much more um, just better, just in a better way than, than you ever could. And for me, I love that. I'm a people person. I love I'm so thankful that people are interested in what we do and that they want to watch what we do. And I love it when people write in or connect with us on social media. And I love to be able to, you know, write back and again, engage with them. And, and that's fun. So, so yeah, from, from both the business side and, and just kind of the creative side and as, you know, the performer to audience side, you know, the digital age has made, it's made everybody kind of, you know, much more accessible. It makes the whole world feel kind of closer together. Um, you know, I, I can't imagine it, you know, not being that way. It, it just it just shapes everything that we do now. All right. Just before continuing this conversation for you, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30 day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. I personally recommend the audiobook The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien, or you can choose the audiobook of your choice for free by trying audible.com to download your free audiobook today go to audibletrial.com/fred again that's audibletrial.com/fred you will be entertained and at the same time you will help a brother out so everybody wins go to audibletrial.com/fred for your free audiobook once again, this is my, we're here, this is Frederick Bye, and we're here with Michael Grandinetti. He's a magician and an illusionist and entertainer. He's filming season three of Masters of Illusion on the CW, scheduled for June 3rd this summer. Um, all right. A lot of people want to do, you know, want to, they want to do magic. They want to write a book. They want to write a new piece of music, but they're rigged. They're, you know, fear. Fear gets in the way. I have bills to pay. Uh, you know, I have mortgage. I have children. I have this. I have that. And I don't know. In my opinion, there are like three main fears: the lack of money, failure, and rejection. Um, let's let's start off with uh, the lack of money. How, how? What would you tell somebody? You know, who want to, uh, you know, create this new thing, this new business, or this new book? But hey, I'm afraid I won't make any money. Well, first of all. I would say in regards to all, all three of those fears, you know, fears are in your mind and they're not physical things that are out there in the universe. So don't let you, can, you shut those off. Don't, somebody told me once, don't know what you can't do. Don't know what you can't do, which means don't put limits on yourself. There are no actual physical barriers that are keeping us from stuff. It's just all in our head where we go. I, I, look, 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 the fears you talked about. So, you know, but I will say be smart about it. Be careful about it plan carefully. So for everyone, it comes to the money side of things, you know, uh, that's important because people need to eat. They need to have a roof over their head. They need to, you know, not approach. If, if you're just starting a venture, if you're just starting a creative endeavor, right, you, you don't want the pressure on yourself. You don't want the stress. You, you need to kind of nurture that and build that in, an, in a way where it is conducive to having it grow. So I think in some way, taking the pressure off of yourself, whether if you do it you know, part time initially until it's ready to kind of fly on its own. Um, you know, but I, I think that, uh, you know, do it in a way, grow a creative endeavor in a way where you don't feel the pressure, where it doesn't become like a stressful thing. And then, you know, it, it'll grow to the point where it, when it'll take off and then it, it'll let you kind of fly with it. Uh, you know, if you build in the proper way. So if that makes sense, uh, you know, if it doesn't make sense, let me know. But I, I think that that's what people should do. I think they should, they need to plan carefully. They need to be smart about what they do. They need to build their endeavor in a way where they can build it without the pressure. And then when it takes off, run with it. And you know what? On the, the money side, the money will the money will come. You know, it, it, it's it's like anything else. You know, follow what you love to do, do it well, and and you will find opportunities out there to to make it work. The world is full of opportunities. It's full of opportunities. And if you don't limit yourself, 
you know, like we were just saying, if you don't limit yourself, you go out there and find them. You go out there and find them. So, you know, again, don't know what you can't do. Go after what you want to do. All right. What about failure? We're afraid to fail because it sucks to fail. It hurts. It's uh, humbling. It's uh, it's not fun. And you may hurt other people in the process. Uh, what would you tell them? You're not going to escape failure. You're, you're just not. Failure is a part of life. So don't be afraid of it. Just know that it's going to, you know, and here's the other thing. And this is kind of cliche, but failure is kind of good. Failure is good because that's what you learn. You learn more from from what doesn't work than sometimes than what does work. You, you know, you'll go, boy, I'll never do it that way again. Or you'll go, you know, that didn't work. But what if I tried it this way? And, you know, you learn. I've learned so much over the years from just doing that, from going, you know what? That didn't really work out. Like when I first, again, first got out of college and was just trying to get my feet wet and everything, there was a lot of trial and error. And there was a lot of things I tried that didn't work, it, it, different ways to approach people, even different ways to write a letter to people to introduce myself. You know, but it was just, it's, it's part of the process. Don't look at failure as a negative or as a painful thing. Use it for your advantage. Use it as a way to narrow down finding What's going to be that magic equation for you to make it work? So look at failure as just it's 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 like failure is like potholes on a road or turbulence in the airplane. You know it's going to happen. It's going to happen, but it's not going to. You know it's just it's a little unpleasant at the time, but you just keep going forward and you'll be fine. You keep going forward and you're going to get there. You know so yeah pot, don't don't let failure stop you in your tracks. You know at all. All right. Uh... Rejection. Ooh, when you have a new business idea, when you want to do a new trick, when you want to, when you produce a new book and you get met with an, a stiff no, or even worse, indifference. I think sometimes, sometimes indifference is even worse than a no, because at least a no gives you a cause, <laughs> you know, yeah. but to, to fight it, you know, against. But, um, all right, talk to us a little bit about rejection. Another, once again, you know, not going to escape that in life. Uh, there are, there are, you know, I just saw an interview with it with a rather famous movie actor who wanted to get a, a part. It was going after a part in a movie and didn't get it. And this is somebody who's a, you know, really well known, well established movie actor, and they were essentially, you know, rejected from something that they they were going after. So, unescapable, unescapable. But again, just like with failure. It's it's going to happen. Chalk it up. There are in today's world where we were talking earlier with the digital age where you could reach out and connect with so many people, so many opportunities. Find another find another path, find another way, find another person, find another project, you know, just keep keep going forward. You know, re rejection is inescapable no matter what where you are in life or what your status is or. Uh, it happens all the time. It happens all the time to, to everybody. So, so, you know, just roll with it. And, and again, use it to fuel you, use it to make you go, you know what? Okay. They didn't want that this time. I'm going to come up with something better. I'm going to, you know, find a different direction for it. I'm going to sell it in a different way. Turn it into a positive. Really? I mean, it, again, it sounds cliche, but, but it really works. It really works. Um, I'll, I'll tell you something. I remember about 10 years ago, before I started to do all the stadium shows, we, we've done a lot of halftime shows for uh, NFL football games and NBA basketball games. <clears throat> I remember when I had the idea, somebody said to me, that's never going to work. That's never going to work. They, you know, we're, they're just never, never going to put you. I mean, they're never going to want, you know, magic in that environment. People are coming to see sports. They don't want to see magic. They don't want blah, blah. You know, they don't want, they just, we're down talking it, right? And I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to prove that wrong because I know that this is going to work. You may not like this. You're, you're, you may not feel connected with this idea. And that's fine. To each his own. But I believe in this. I know this is going to work. I think this is a tremendous opportunity for this. I did not take the any negativity to heart. I kept pushing forward. And now we've done, you know, 30 stadium shows. Mm. And we have more coming up, you know. So, you know, it, it, it's using take understanding that it's just necessary part of the game and keep pushing forward and using it to, to fuel you that's the best advice i can give people as far as rejection 
Yeah, that's uh, that, that's very that's very wise and very, uh, that's very um, good. Um, all right, let me ask you this: A lot of people uh, they grow up, uh, you know, the creativity gets um, sucked away. I should say, the, 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 you know, their creativity dies after they get into a job, you know, nine to five, blah blah blah. And what would you say? What would you say to someone who fears he or she is not a creative person? Well, I mean, you, you, as far as if they want to be creative, but they feel like they just yeah, don't have they, the ability yeah, they, to be they creative. Yeah, they think that, you know what, I can start a business, or I can be a magician, or I can be a writer, because I'm, I, I'm just not a creative person. Like, you know, their their creative confidence is kind of shaken, or, you know, their creative self-esteem, I should say, is kind of low. Well, you know, it goes back to not knowing what you can't do. That's a limit that they're putting on themselves. And I truly believe that if somebody, if somebody has that interest and in that, you know, if they go, for example, boy, you know, I really wish I could be a painter, but I just can't, I just don't think I could do it. Well, first of all, the fact that you want to do it, you have that interest and you have that little bit of passion in you for it. That alone is going to, you know, People are people tend to be good at what they like, what they want to do, and, and at least, or at least, it gets them on, on the path to starting off, learning, growing, um, and, and, and getting better with it, improving with it as they go. So, you know, I would tell people if you want to do something, don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself. Give it a shot. You know, and don't be discouraged. Remember, you have to start somewhere. Uh, you know, in magician's terms, you know, I started doing. You know, uh, really simple, basic magic tricks, the kind that everybody does when they start out, you know, from these magic kits that you get at the, at the you know, at the toy store and, and so forth. Um, but, you know, you start small and you build and you learn and you grow. And over time, if you stay on the path, you get there. Don't limit yourself. Don't put that negativity on yourself. That's the only thing that's holding you back. I really, you know, I really feel that that even if people don't, So let's go back to the person who wants to be the painter. Even if they don't become the world's best painter, just the fact that they've taken that step, they're doing it, they're experiencing it, they're having fun with it. I think they'll feel they'll, they'll feel uh, completely fulfilled by doing it. So jump in and do it. Don't put a limit on yourself. Yeah. All right. What do you do when you're blocked and nothing comes to you? Uh, for me personally, you know, I. For me personally, there are so many facets of my business. You know, if, if I'm working on a creative piece of something and I'm just hitting a wall, I will walk away and I'll work on another part of the business. I'll work on the business side or I'll, I'll edit music or I'll, or I'll edit a piece of videotape that we're working on. Or <clears throat> I think it's important to shift gears and to go back to it. Or, you know, go out and take a walk. Clear your mind. Clear your mind. Go to the gym. You know, that's uh, <laughs> what I do. I, every once a day, I go to the gym and just kind of, kind of uh, shut the mind off, and then you know, come back and 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 hit it again. Um, you know, don't. It, it will. It will come when it comes. So you know, when your mind gets fatigued from thinking, shift to something else. Shift to something else. And I, I you know, I've all, I've always found that when you kind of shift gears. And give your mind a little bit of a break from that from that piece that you're working on. In a relatively short period of time, when you go back to it, you'll find the answer. You will find the answer. And here's another little thing. And I, I certainly didn't invent this, but it, but it works. Um, if there's a problem you're thinking of, like think about it before you go to sleep at night. Like not like tremendously to the point where you can't sleep, but you know just kind of put it in your head and and, and think about it, and then go to sleep. And I found that when I wake up. The thought, you know, you the, the, when you start thinking of it again, your mind, it, it's, it's almost like a kind of, you know, while you're sleeping, it's still kind of working on it a little bit. And, you know, you find little solutions to the problem, you know, that way that that's been helpful you know to me. But, yeah, you know, there, there's you know, the ideas will always come. Just kind of shift gears and go back to it and refresh your mind, recharge your brain. And, and the ideas will come. What is the number one habit that fuels a creative life? Wow. Like do you do you um, meditate? Do you I don't know <laughs> go to the gym every day and then you know, whatever you know? 
no, you know what? What fuels my life is just a passion for what I do. I think doing doing what you love. But you don't have like a habit, like something that just you do every day that kind of sets you, you know, in a good mindset, puts you in a good mindset. To create, no. No, I mean there really isn't one for, for me personally. There there isn't one activity. Um, it, it's just I, I literally wake up every morning, spring out of bed, and get get straight to work. Like I'm already kind of energized. I, I've never lost. It's never been lost on me that I that I'm, you know, kind of living out my childhood dream. So I, I wake up very excited and very enthused for it. So so yeah, there's not any one thing. I just I'm just. Every day I kind of approach it with that excited mindset. What is your favorite motivational phrase? Oh, it's got to be, it's got to be don't know what you can't do, what I said earlier. It's got to be. It's got to be because my, my entire life has been about, you know, trying to find places to take magic where magic hasn't gone. And in so many ways, you know, if I just said to myself, Oh, um, you know, magic's never gone there. No one's ever done it there. For, I'll give you an example. So we did the Washington, the Washington D.C. Uh, it was the National Independence Day parade, the Fourth of July parade in Washington D.C. A, a couple years back, and they had never, never had a magician in the parade. Um, and so I said, you know what? I would like to do this. I would like to do this. And you know, if if I just said to myself, well, you know, it's a, it's a moving parade. How are you going to do magic when the parade's moving? And they've never done magic and it's going to be outdoors in the summertime. It's going to be hot. It's going to be windy. If you start thinking of all these reasons why it's not going to work, but I never do that. I never, I've never done that. I just said, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to find a way to make it work. And we did it. And we became, I was, the, I was very honored to be the first magician ever to perform in the, in this, in the, in the parade. There were, you know, it was, it was a wonderful experience. So, Don't know what you can't do. If you want to go out and do something, uh, do it. Absolutely do it. So that's my, if I had to pick a phrase, that's it. You're like an entrepreneur. Uh, actually, you are an entrepreneur. I think, you know, as you said earlier, you, you got to take care of business at the same time as you do the magic. How do you remain calm in uncertainty? You know, when, when you, when we're in, in jobs or not job, but when we are in, in endeavors where, You don't have a steady paycheck or whatever. How do you remain? How do you remain calm in uncertainty? Well, you know, I just have faith that there's, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of opportunities out there, and you know, it's a big connected country in a big connected world, and you know, there, there's just I, I have full confidence that you know that, that there's never you, you never run out of places to go and things to do ever. You just have to go for them. You just have to go out and, 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 you know, make them work. I, you know, as an entrepreneur, I'm very proactive. I am very, I, I do not wait for the phone to ring. Yeah. You know, I am very, very proactive. So, you know, and, and I, you know, literally I always have numerous kind of, um, uh, projects kind of going on at the same time because that's, you know, what I like to do. I, I always like to go after a lot of things. So for me, it's, it's just, it's just knowing that it, it, you know, when I work 17 hours a day, seven days a week on so many different elements of my business that, you know, there's no shortage of, of mountains to climb and, and people to talk to and places to go. And, and that's the yeah. fun of it. That's the fun of it. So, you know, I don't, I don't I really even let any of those negative fears or anything into my mind. It's just always about, all right, you know, Where are we going to perform today? Who are we going to talk to today? Who are we going to meet today? You know, uh, it's just all about moving in a positive yeah. direction. Uh, do you think creativity is spiritual? Uh, in what sense? It's it's spiritual growth. Like, um, you have to tap into this part of you that, you know, the higher part of you. Because where does creativity comes from? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's no, yeah, I, I, yes, I think that, you know, that's a, that's a challenging one. As far as creativity, I, I think, I think like anything else, creativity needs to be exercised. Oh yeah. Hmm. I think you need to, you know, you need to work on it. You know, I'm going to create a field, so I'm constantly trying to, you know, uh, my my life is basically one big creative exercise each and every day. It's like going to the gym. You know, you, you just, you start with the lightweights and you get heavier and heavier and heavier. 
creativity is much the same. I, I think that, you know, it, it's, you know, you kind of have to develop it, work on it, expand it as you go. So, you know, I certainly, I can honestly tell you this, you know, as the years have gone on from the time I first got that magic set to now, you know, my creativity has, has expanded just because of constant mm -hmm. practice. So I think that's, you know, that's, uh, certainly one, one source of it. But also I think you kind of have to be born with that creative mm -hmm. spark in you mm -hmm. that you enjoy being creative and it's what you love to do. And it's, you know, it's, it's kind of a part of your, your, um, you know, fascination. I, I love, I, you know, I love all sides of being creative. I, I just, I do. If somebody said to me, you know, what do you enjoy more, the creative side or the business side? It's tough. It's close. I enjoy both, but the creative side to me is just, you know, it's, yeah. it's my favorite. All right. We're going to wrap this up. If you were stuck on an island, 500 bucks in your pocket, a laptop and an internet connection, what would you do the next seven days? Wow. That's a great <laughs> question. So I was stuck on an island, a laptop, and what was the, what was the it? connection and 500 bucks? 500 bucks. Well, you know, the, the 500 bucks, I, you know, I, I, the first thing I would do is just keep, keep writing to people and trying to, trying to, uh, uh, create more magic projects. That's it. I would sit, if I was on an island, I would sit on the beach from morning till night with a laptop in hand and, and continuously try and find new places to take magic. Wouldn't be worried about anything else. As long as I found continuously, you know, new places to take magic. I, it would be, it would be a, I would enjoy the setting while I was doing that. You know, it'd be a fun place to do it, but that's all I would think about is just how do I keep pushing forward with what I want? You know, it, it's no matter where I am, it, it, even now, you know, whether I'm on airplanes or, or whatever city I'm in, it's always about, always about how do I keep pushing forward with magic? So I think if I was stuck on an island, you know, that's, and of course I have to figure out a way to get off there so I can keep doing shows, but, you know, other than that, it's just pushing forward with, with, mm -hmm. with magic. That's my driving force. Awesome. Awesome, Michael. Well, where, where can we find you? And, uh, where can we find, where, where can we check you, check out your, your shows and everything? Well, I, I, you know, I invite your listeners to please check out my website, michaelgrandinetti.com. Uh, we have all of our latest videos and pictures and, you know, ways to connect with me up there. Also social media on Facebook. I'm just under my name, Michael Grandinetti. Twitter, I'm Grandinetti MG. Instagram, I'm Michael Grandinetti. Uh, and I invite people again, connect, <clears throat> excuse me, connect. And I love to hear from people. And I, I you know, I love when people, uh, um, you know, kind of take time to, to, you know, get in touch. So please do get in touch. And, and again, we travel all the time. So if we come to your town, I, you know, anybody listening, please do come and see us and come say hi after the show. I would, I would certainly love to, love to meet you. All right. Well, Thank you very much, Michael. Check him out, uh, Masters of Illusion on the, C on the CW, uh, June 3rd. It's, it's coming out. Hey, thank you, Michael. That was a very, very funny interview. Thank you very much. That was awesome. Hey, Fred, thank you so much. I, it was, it was fantastic talking with you. I really appreciate yeah, well, you having appreciate me on. Having you on. Thank you very much, Michael. All right, guys. All right. All right. All right. Hey, how was that? How was the interview? I love, I love talking with, with people like Michael. Hey man, thanks Michael. Thanks for your enthusiasm. Thanks for being present on the show. Thanks for just being honest. And I think you were, <laughs> I think you were honest in, in your, in your answers. And, um, and so, uh, and so right before I ride off into the sunset, I just, I just want to say a few plugs right before I walk out of here. Uh, first of all, audibletrial.com slash Fred. Audible is amazing if you love books, but you can't always you read a book. You know, you can't always have a book in your hand or on your cell phone, but you can listen to them. And I mean, they have over 180,000 books all over the place. Hey, you know what? Audibletrial.com slash Fred. It doesn't cost you anything more, you know, and it really helps me out. Um, other than that, uh, check out my YouTube channel. Uh, Frederick by for all preview for all episodes and uh, also this week I interviewed Beth Banning part two on the book geek unchained uh, podcast uh, ooh, I love ba Beth Banning I love 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 Beth Banning it was really really a cool cool interview um, uh, this is what I mean I did two parts with her. I mean we spoke for a long time and it was it was uh, I learned a lot it is uh, 
I mean, it is uplifting, spiritually uplifting, and uh, I'm so grateful for that interview. So I did that. The interview uh, was published actually Wednesday. So uh, check it out on uh, my YouTube channel or frederickby.com. And uh, so Twitter, at by Fred, Facebook, Frederick by. And with this, we're going to be back next week. Oh, yeah, on a Creative Magic Unchained. So stay safe. And don't forget, live with purpose, passion, and love. Bye-bye.